Right, so inverse trig and hyperbolic functions. So to see how to find complex um, complex values of these, again, these are multi-value functions, obviously, um, we'll look at uh, inverse sine of z as an example. So uh, to derive the formulae, um, we write z equals sine w. You should use the definition of sine w, which 127b tells us sine w is going to be e to the i w minus e to the minus i w over 2i. And then we simply rearrange this to get w as a subject, and then w has to be inverse sine of z. So if we multiply this equation by e to the i w, uh, and then rearrange, well, you can see what happens. We get e to the 2i w minus 1 divided by 2i, and then we've got z times e to the i w. Rearranging that gives you a quadratic in e to the i w. Um, so we just use the normal quadratic formula for that. So in this case, um, we've got uh, minus b, which we're going to divide by 2, gives you the i z. And now normally you would write plus and minus root of b squared minus 4ac. Um, when you're dealing with complex numbers, you don't put the plus and minus because you've got a square root, which you write as to the power half. As soon as you see to the power half, you know that there's, because you've got a 2 here, you know that there's two values, which are going to be the plus and minus. So conventionally, you don't, you don't put the plus and minus here because the power half implies that there are two values, which, as you know, are going to be the plus and minus. So you have to remember this. Um, it's just a convention. Um, the reason is that if you were to do to the power one third, okay, then you get one, then you get three values, and then there's no way you can actually represent those three values using a, a symbol. So just to be consistent with that, you don't put the plus and minus uh, when you're dealing with complex numbers. But don't forget that there are two values which are in fact given by plus and minus. Okay, so um, the quadratic formula gives you this. Um, and then all you have to do next is obviously just take logs and divide by um, divide by i. So you take logs on both sides and divide by i, which is equivalent to multiplying by minus i, and that gives you the formula for inverse sine z. And in very similar ways, you can show um, these other formulae here. Now, um, when to use these formally, when to use these, um, they look rather complicated. And we've already, already done an example where we, we've found inverse cos of two earlier on. Um, we didn't use this formula. We did something which in the, in, end, in the end is quicker. So normally um, you only use these formally in practice if Z has both real and imaginary parts. If z is either pure imaginary or, or real, then it's quicker to use um, the method we used in a previous example, which is um, the example we did was uh, back here. Okay, so here we're effectively finding inverse cos of two, and it's much quicker to do something like like this. So basically, using using um, these formulae here uh, ends up being quicker if the, if the inverse quantity you want to find is, is uh, z is real or imaginary. Okay, so let's now do an example. Um, inverse tan of 1 plus i. So we use this formula here and just plug everything in. It's fairly straightforward. So we've got i over 2 times log of i plus, and we've got 1 plus 2. So it's i, uh, i plus 1 plus i gives you 1 plus 2i, and i minus 1 plus i. Uh, the i's cancel and you just got minus one at the bottom. So we've now got this number here, log of minus one minus two i. Um, here we have to be. Here we have to think a little bit about which direction this lies. So this is um, pointing in this direction. It's downwards. Um, always good good idea to draw a little picture for yourself. Uh, so it's 
it's uh, this direction here. So if we're going to calculate the angle, um, it's going to be, uh, which draw, uh, uh, it's going to be, um, uh, yes, this angle here, if you can imagine, which is inverse tan of two, because you've got two upwards and one horizontal, okay? And then we're going to add pi to that. Anyway, I'll let you draw a picture and think about it. Anyway, you end up with inverse tan of two plus pi as the angle. I'm not, I'm not using the principal argument because um, I'm always free to uh, um, add two pi i to any angle anyway. So um, I've chosen to use an angle which is not between pi and uh, not between uh, um, minus pi and plus pi. But yeah, it doesn't really make much difference. Okay, the uh, length obviously is just uh, square root of one plus four. Um, so we've got this number now in polar form. Um, Yes, I mean, note, I have, I, I, I can then, I haven't actually written it here, I, I can then add the plus 2n pi inside here, which I haven't done. I'm doing it at this stage here. Um, doesn't particularly matter when I do it, as long as it's there eventually. Okay, so now um, I'm taking logs, so I've got log of 5, log of root 5 is half log 5. And I've got log of this thing here. Um, this is actually where I've added the 2n plus 1 pi. Maybe it's slightly confusing. I could have put it in here, but um, okay. I'm, I'm adding it at this point here. Uh, so the pi gives you the 1, and then you've got 2n pi i, which you can always add. And then finally, I need to simplify this. So um, dealing with this first, I've got... Um, I over 4 log 5, which goes here. I've got um, <clears throat> uh, I times I gives you minus 1 over 2, so I've got minus a half log 2. And then I've got this left over, which is I times I again um, over 2. So I've got um, n plus a half pi with a minus sign, but then I can change m n to another integer, um, and n is any integer. So just to make it look nicer, I get rid of the minus sign and use a new symbol and say m is any, any integer, and uh, that's my final answer in its simplest form. Okay, so uh, you can now do questions eight and nine. Uh, from past experience, people, okay, I can tell you, tell you in advance the mistakes people tend to make with questions eight and nine. So just be very careful to find all possible values of inverse sine of half. You know what they are from high school maths. Just make sh so uh, you know that part A and part B should give you the same answer. So if they don't, you've forgotten something. Uh, and really find all the values. You know there's infinitely many, so you have to find all of them. I'll give a formula for all, all of them. Um, and again, I underline all possible values of inverse tangent of zero. It's not just one value, you have to find all of them. Okay.